Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to add a zipper to the front of your bomber jacket or um, hoodie, something that has rib knit on the top and the bottom. And so I just did a mock-up sample, this is not a jacket, it's just the three pieces. So the first step you're going to want to do is you're going to join your rib knit to your main fabric with your serger in the back, okay, you know, your right sides together and then serge it. So I did, you're going to do that on the top and the bottom before you start to apply your zipper. And I went ahead and prepared ahead of time some steps so that you wouldn't have to watch me hand sew stuff. But um, basically you'll have your rib knit marked in the half of where it's going to be folded over, right? Because so, you're only going to put your zipper up to the halfway point because later this will get folded over and turned. And then I want you, and I separated my zipper. I have the, you know, the other half here. You're only going to do one half at a time. And then you're going to take your tape and you're going to fold it back at like a 45 degree angle towards the center front, so away, away from the teeth. So maybe I'll just show you. So my tape was here. This is where, my, where I want it to end. I'm going to fold it in like about an eighth of an inch left at the top of the tape right there. I'll pin that back. Okay, and you're going to line that up at the edge. And because once this is done, you don't want to see the big tape you know, the, the ridge of the tape sticking up for the rest of the tape. So then I went ahead and I just, with my right, with the zipper facing the right sides down, by the way, as you can see here, I went and I pinned it all down first to my markings, which is my halfway point of my rib knit on the bottom and my halfway point of the rib knit at the top. And then I want you to hand base this in because it's going to stretch. You just want to, once this is marked and presented properly, you don't want to deal with it moving and stretching on you. So I always suggest hand basting everything together. The foot I'm going to be using is the one with the hole on the left, for this one, the hole on the left side. So hopefully you can see that. I'll just hold another one in the camera view, which is actually one with the hole. Can you see that? On the right side. But we're going to, right now I'm using the one with the hole on the left side. Okay, so since it's all basted, I'm going to come next to the zipper tape, not at the zipper, but a little bit away from the teeth. And I'm going to use my regular stitch length. Back stitch. And remember, we're keeping that fold down. So I can move my camera a little closer. Okay. So if you notice, I'm coming right inside that teeth. Uh, I'm sorry, outside of the teeth. You can see a little bit of the tape. Now, one thing I want to mention is when I'm getting to here, my seam allowance is coming towards the main part of the garment. You don't want it pushed down towards the rib knit. So hopefully you can see I've got the where the, these are surged together, and they're facing back now up towards the body of the garment, not towards the rib knit. Okay, now when I get to this side, I want to make sure the same thing is happening, that my seam allowances are now facing up into the garment, not down. It may tend to want to do that when you're sewing, even with it basted, it could do that. So just make sure that it's up that way. And if you're coming to the end where this, this is, um, the zipper pull becomes problematic, you can stop a little bit, keep your needle down, and then zip it away because if it's really wide like that one kind of is, once you get down to here, it could not let you go where you want, like zigzag away. All right, so I'm gonna come to the end. Now you're not gonna do anything with this because this is where the stopper is and just finish it off there. Now, the way I wanna demonstrate this is for an unlined jacket. So uh, what I went ahead and did was I made some binding Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and finish the zipper with my tape together so that it's completely finished and, you know, looks beautiful inside, but I don't have to line it. So the next step I'm going to do then is go from the back side, the underside, and I'm going to, and I went ahead and made my binding and already pressed it under. It's just in muslin. You can get matching I just want you to see the contrast when I'm doing this. And now I'm going to go from the back side. Now you don't have to bind all the way down to the bottom because this is going to get folded over with the rib knit and it'll just add a little bit too much bulk. So I'm going to come back on, wait, let me take my zipper down. I'm going to come in maybe an inch past this line from the where this seam line is, where they were surged. And I'm going to just lay this with my right sides down. 
about an, like I said, about an inch, three quarters of an inch. And now I'm going to go ahead and sew this binding, and it should be a little bit past where we did the uh, application of the zipper using the same foot. And I'm just checking that my, my um, seams are going where I want, make sure they don't get twisted on you. And again, I'm just going to go up maybe an inch here. You can go all the way up, it just might add some extra bulk that you don't need. I'm just going to snip that off and make this a little more even. Okay. So now I've got the right side of my zipper facing up. I'm going to fold my bias tape over there, covering all my stitches. And you're going to pin all this down all the way. Now again, we want to cover that the stitching. You could take your um, basting out actually at this point, but I didn't. It's not showing anyway, so it doesn't matter, but if, it, if you want, you, that would have been a good time to do it. I just didn't do it. Okay. So again, this just kind of gives you a nice professional finish on the inside. Your seams are finished. They're combined with your zip. And you can make it smaller, you can make it bigger, whatever. You, you, it all depends on your design. Okay, now I'm going to go to here. Now, as I mentioned before, I want you to hand baste this down, but for the speed of the video and you're not watching me hand baste, I'm going to go ahead and change my foot because I won't have as much control with this foot as I will with the other foot I'm going to show you. Um, I call it the skinny zipper foot. It's got the two little teeth, but they're, you can see they're quite close together. Let's see. See that? If you're using a home sewing machine, you probably have a foot that doesn't have two holes in it, but is a smaller foot that you can use. So this foot lets me still get close to the zipper tape, and I don't need to get too, too close, right? I'm gonna have my binding at the edge. If I, was hand, if I had hand based, this would be nice and perfect, but I'm just gonna go as, I wanna cover my stitch line. And this foot allows me to get close, but also gives me extra pressure on, because it's got the two, two little um, feet toes, I guess. <laughs> As you can see here, this is what we want it to look like. It's close to the edge. This also gives the front of your jacket a little more structure. Again, this is, this is mostly for when you're not lining something. You're not lining it. Okay, so now I'm just going to go to the end and stitch it. So this may look a little funky right now because it's like, what are we doing here? <laughs> All these different layers. But what I, I'll kind of show you what I'm attempting to do here. I want to turn, now I'm going to turn my rib knit up over the end of the zip. And it's going to go, it's already mapped out, right? So it's going to go to this side and it'll be, it should be matching up with the other side. I'm going to go ahead and pin it. There's a little bit of stretch um, down in here. So you can see why I didn't want to bring the binding all the way down because this is going to be encased and then you'd have some extra bulk. So I'm going to leave that one like that and then I'm going to go to the top one and right where I have that fold, I'm going to come down. Okay, pin. And now I'm going to go ahead and just stitch with my regular machine to here. But one thing I want to show you, now that I did it flat, I want to show you what, what I'm going to do next. I want you to bring this edge a little bit slanted. 
it'll make sense when we're done. <laughs> a little bit closer to the edge, just at the very tip. And I'm going to continue with the same foot that I used. You can kind of feel with your fingernails or like if you need to just use a tool to kind of make sure you're not sewing over the, the um, zipper tape. And now this is where when I said I want you to kind of slant this just at the very end. This rib is unraveling on me. Let me trim that. turn it, check my work, looks good, and see how down here we still have a little, this is where I folded it over, where where the um, the fold was, it's close to the neck, but you're not seeing like that zipper tape, I could have even gone a little bit closer, but this is a pretty bulky rib knit for this type of zipper, so um, you could go even a little bit closer, like to there, okay, but like a quarter of an inch, so this looks nice, right, everything's bound on the inside, and now what we would have to do is let me bring it back into the camera properly is we need to join these areas where they would be surged so the bottoms were already connected but now I need to connect this and I'm not going to bring it over to a serger for the sake of the picture of the video but you would be surging this together or if you have a home machine, zigzag it together. And this part right here where I told you to kind of bring it over to the side. Again, my I don't know why my ribnet is looking like that. So you would bring all of this together and you're going to surge, 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 surge. But when you get to here, you really can't go any further because we are not you know, mass production machines. And then you can just come in with your um, single needle machine and just catch it right there. But you should be able to surge that whole thing. And even by just like bringing this over even a little bit more, you might be able to catch the whole thing with the serger. But just be very, very careful when you get here. You don't want to cut anything. So I would probably just do my single needle right here or zigzag and then continue with the surging there. Okay, and then you would do the same exact process for the top. But I'm, I'm just going to end it there because it's the same exact thing. Okay, there you go. Thank you.